Outside Rugby School in England stands the statue of William Webb Ellis, the man credited with the invention of the game. But the ball he decided to pick up and run with back in 1823 bears very little resemblance to the modern day ball we see in use today. Situated across the road from the famous statue is the Rugby Museum, on the very same site where William Gilbert first opened a factory in 1842, producing pig bladder balls for the boys of a rugby school to play with. The original football shape began to evolve alongside the game itself. We wanted the shoemaker to cover it with leather so that it would last a little bit longer. But as the years went by, the rubber bladder was invented by Richard Linden. And once they'd got that, they could get more conformity to the shape. There's more of an oval shape as the game became more of a running and throwing game. Slowly, the shape of the ball began to change. The name Gilbert lives on, of course, and despite the huge advances in technology, there are still some traditional methods employed, including hand stitching. I am the only ball stitcher left in England. When you say what you do, they can't believe it. You know, they, they all think it's being done by machines now, but it's not. Our balls are all hand stitched, so it's uh, it's a job in a million to me. I enjoy it. I enjoy the game. So, you know, it's one of these things. Once the bladder is attached, the ball is then turned inside out, ready for the final and trickiest stage of the stitching. And then it's ready to start stitching again. There's the needles, there's the gap, there's the corner, the cross piece there. So your needles go through there. What I do like is when you see them on, on the TV or you see them in matches being used, and you think, hmm, I probably did that one, you know, and it, it's, it's quite nice. And then you think, when the really big matches, oh, if it doesn't burst, <laughs> which it, I've never seen it happen, but, uh, you know, there's always that little bit at the back, in the back of your mind. But no, it, it, it's, it's thrilling, really, to see them at, in a match. Testing the ball is the most important part of the development process and prototypes are taken to the English Premiership side Northampton where 2003 World Cup winner Paul Grayson puts the ball through its paces. As a player you, you know how you want a ball to feel. Um, as soon as you pick a ball up you can almost sense whether it's a good ball or not. You get that instant, uh, the feel of the grip and then obviously as a kicker as soon as you put boot to ball you want to know you can trust you can trust the ball and it'll deliver what you expect. All the work that we do um, theory-wise um, gives us what should happen, but obviously we need players' input and, and specifically Paul's input to actually take that is what happens and it is you know, a benefit, it is an improvement. Um, and I think what Paul gives us is, uh, is a consistent level of kicking as well. So what we want from somebody who's testing is somebody who's going to approach kicking the ball the same way each time so that we can get... Um, correct comparisons in between the balls rather than maybe somebody has one kicking style for one ball which they don't like and then changes their style you know we wouldn't get any comparison ball per ball it would be you know player per player so Paul what is the secret of successful kicking valve towards the target the, the, the seams of the ball are a natural uh, aiming mechanism and if you kick the ball on the seam you get greater penetration into the ball so you get a greater rebound off your foot that promotes distance as well as accuracy. As well as receiving feedback from the professionals, Gilbert work with high-tech laboratories in search of the ball for the future. It's very much taking a scientific look at, at how the ball performs and taking real, real-life um, video footage and putting that into a, almost a virtual world to then do some, um, you know, experiments on with changing the pimple patterns, looking at different types of material to make the ball from, and so it gives us a bit of a, a, a push in the right direction to say that's worth looking at, and then we take that information and, and we'd start to prototype and, um, and then look to test with players. It's not just about producing a ball that flies the furthest or bounces the highest or is, has the best grip. It's about uh, finding a ball which um, maintains the integrity of the game and, and performs in any conditions and at the, uh, under the severest of, of pressure that you get in a World Cup or an Alliance Tour. Um, you know, the, the, the product that goes over the whitewash with the player um, has to be trusted by everybody and has to deliver.